Yeah, 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 yeah. Margarita filet. Guys, today we are we are in Cozumel today. Cozumel today. We're gonna go to where? Training, so like a beverage. <laughs> we're gonna, we will visit the factory or uh, the place how they make the uh, what's that? Tequila. Tequila. Yes. Right. Because Mexico is about tequila. Okay. Uh, it's a factory, I think. Factory. Factory. Right. Let's see. We will see. <laughs> okay. So. And this is for lunch? Lunch, lunch, lunch. Okay, let's go. We going to Okay. First what? Okay. <laughs> Gonji, gonji, better. Gonji, gonji, better. Yeah. Okay. Wow. We got. Oh, is it this dessert? Yeah. Uh, drink. Okay. So we got a lunch first. And they welcome us with the lunch, and this for the coffee and so on and so on and the juice. Okay. Oh, where did you come ask with the lunch time? Still waiting for them. Um, okay, this is uh, Mr. Dewa. Uh, yeah. Oh, finito! Finito! <laughs> Okay, after we got lunch, uh, then we are ready for a show of the mixed drink, yeah? So in the front of us, we have a uh, one Jameson, this is one Jameson, it's gonna be one absolute vodka and one perno Ricard, yeah perno Ricard. and this is a jamison yeah okay and then uh, we have a, a souvenir uh, belt yeah you got a souvenir bag okay so we doing this in That's it. La Sieba. And the Jamison Iris Whiskey. Absolute is the vodka. Yeah, 
Okay, uh, I got my lunch already. There's nice pork rib, uh, arroz, it's a Mexican rice, and uh, cob of the corn. Yeah, and uh, mm, this perfect time. Uh, I just uh, starving. <laughs> I'm starving, and I got my lunch. <laughs> oh, just in time, in the right time, in the right place. Excuse me today. Okay, and after this, we are gonna try uh, a few of the liquor and uh, a mixed drink yeah okay like uh, what does it look like for today stay tuned in my channel okay guys this is a location uh, we are in uh, zona hotelera sur yeah yeah and consumer and okay, this is the name that's it So my focus basically in my segment is going to be cruise ships, cruise lines. Uh, I started my career in the hospitality industry as a bartender. I bartended for 16 years in three different markets. I started, I'm born and raised in Puerto Rico, so naturally I started my career in the island of Puerto Rico. Then I moved to Houston, Texas, stayed there for a year and a half, give or take. Then I moved to LA, Los Angeles, California. And then I came back to Houston and then finished up kind of my bartending career, if you will. But lo and behold, 16 years of being behind the bar. Uh, and then I got the opportunity to apply for a position as a brand ambassador for the Scotch Whiskey Portfolio for Northern Art, covering all of Central America and the Caribbean. So basically for a year and a half, year and eight months, I was the brand ambassador for Chivas Brothers. So Chivas Brothers is gonna be the business unit of Bernard Ricard that produces all the Scotch whiskey. Chivas Ricard, Royal Salud, Valentine's, Mendives, Cava, Longmore, Dormore, Aberlauer, you name it, Chivas Ricard makes it, right? So that I focus, uh, I focus for that year and a half on Scotch whiskey. And then I got the opportunity to apply for this position where we are basically, instead of just focusing on a segment, all right, on Scotch whiskey, I'm focusing on the whole portfolio. When I say the whole, por the whole portfolio, I mean Jackson, Bifeter, Absolute, Avion, uh, Altos Tequila, Ternale, Código Tequila, you name it, all the specs that, all the spirits that we represent on the cruise segment are the ones that I basically represent. Okay. Uh, and if you have a question about the process, uh, any of our brands, please feel free to ask. Now's the time, I'm here, you know, I'm really accessible. I don't mind it if you guys ask me in the middle of the, of the session, hey, I, I have a doubt, does this go this way or is it the other way? You know, that's, the, that's the beauty of this session, right? We wanna make it more interactive. So that being said, right, you know, that's me, that's me in a nutshell, born and raised in the hospitality industry. 
work all throughout the infinity different markets, work all, all the positions of the hospitality, mark manager, uh, front of the house, back bar, uh, expo, you name it, done. So, that being said, let's start today, right? Let's start with absolute vodka. Let's first, you know, a, a quick question. What do we mean for vodka? What is vodka? Anybody? Vodka oh, water. Vodka? Water? Yes, it is water of life. Vodka, water. <laughs> Russia, water. Aqua <laughs> or Aquavit or Russia. You know, different names for spirits, for destiny. But nonetheless, vodka as we know it today is gonna be is gonna be defined as a neutral brain spirit, which is gonna be odorless and it's gonna be tasteless. So but today we're gonna debunk that myth and we're gonna go through it. Right, you know, through a guideline, right? And the reason why I say that is because even though we know that vodka is supposed to be odorless and tasteless, we're gonna identify, we're gonna taste vodka to analyze it. Because everybody here has tried both absolute vodka, everybody here has tried Jameson, everybody here has tried Mithy, right? But we tried it in, in a pleasure setting because we like it, because the country is good, we want to give it a little bit of a chunk, but we're gonna get a little bit more deeper inside of the spirits. So that being said, let's start with a brief history of Absolute Vodka. Absolute Vodka started by a gentleman named Lars Olson Smith in 1879. So this gentleman at that time uh, wanted to create a spirit that would represent him, right? That he would enjoy at any given time. And then he decided to create what, is, what was called at that time Ren Bramin. It was an Absolute Vodka that, as we know it today. So then Brahmin was the first iteration, if you will, of this destiny, 1879. We go fast forward to 1907. In 1907, the government of Sweden takes complete control of all the distilleries and all the, uh, the process of, make, of making liquors or spirits within the country of Sweden. So basically, it takes a hold from the distillery, takes, basically just takes it away from the hands of Lars Olsen. And when that happened, they decided to create a new name and give it absolute red Brahmin to start to differentiate themselves from the basics, right? From Lars Olsen. So that's 1907. We go fast forward 1979. It's really important this day because on this day, it's when we, as, or as we know, absolute vodka came to be. In 1979, the government of Sweden decided to rebrand and relaunch the absolute Ren Brahmin, which was known at that time as absolute vodka, pioneering the the ultra premium or premium category of vodkas. So basically, the first premium vodka in the world. Let's put it this way: it was absolute vodka in 1979. So in 1979, the then CEO of Absolute Vodka decided to create and start looking a new way and new ways of marketing the the spirit, right? Of marketing the vodka. So he decided to start collaborating with different artists. And one of the most famous artists that he started that collaborations with was Andy Warhol. So Andy Warhol is one of the most known uh, artists of the modern, modern times, if you will. 1980s, he just took the whole art world by storm. And that ad campaign started to develop into a, almost a, more than 25 years running, basically, ad campaign. So he basically spearheaded the longest running ad campaign for a spirits company that lasted, that lasted over 25 years. All the way to 1992, when the Marketing Hall of Fame inducted that ad campaign into its Hall of Fame. The only one that belongs to a spirits company. It's really great to have that because that's basically a collaborator, a collaboration between the brand Absolute Vodka supporting the creative mind or supporting creativity. And hence, that's why we are born to mix, which I like we see on the banner over here. Because we like to support that creativity. We like to support that visual, that diversity behind the world, right? And that's how Absolute Vodka came to be. And they relaunched it as Absolute Vodka. Boom. That's 1979. So 19, let's back forward to 2005. 2005, that's when we as Absolute, as a Fernandez Guard, acquired the Absolute brand. That's basically Absolute, the history of Absolute Vodka in a nutshell. Really straightforward, on point. We're good? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome, awesome. Now, we're gonna go into what makes us unique 
our four pillars, or basically our brand uniqueness. So we're gonna start with one source. We control everything from sea to bottle. Literally everything. So we have a really big commitment with our community. That's why our second pillar is gonna be one community. We have a direct connection, open door policy for our farmers and the people who basically give us, basically the people that we source our winter wheat from. So winter wheat is gonna be the raw material that we use in order to make absolute vodka. Every, every drop of water and every seed of wheat comes from one source, comes from the small village of Sweden named Ahus, Ahus, yeah. Ahus, yes. Uh, Sweden. So our distiller is gonna be on that village. And it's gonna be really interesting, right? So everything goes from there. The water, the seeds, the winter wheat, boom, we got it from there. Our one commitment, like we said, we do we control the supply process from head to toe, from seed to bottle, to ensure the consistency of our vodka. The consistency and quality of our premium absolute vodka. So that way, whenever you buy a bottle of Brazil vodka, let's say in Japan, or let's say in Brazil, or let's say in Puerto Rico, or let's say Ecuador, you will taste the same quality of spirits. And after that, that's, those are gonna be our main two pillars. <coughs> after that, we're gonna go with unnecessarily good. Right, the first thing that comes to mind when, once we read that is just flavor-wise, right? But let's put it this way, it's not just flavor-wise. When we say unnecessarily good, it is because we have a devoted commitment to the community and to the planet and atmosphere. So, our practices basically are sustainable and respons responsible. Our bottle is gonna be made from at least 53% recycled glass. At least, we're working on it to get it to 100%. As of for now, we're doing it with 53, a minimum of 53% recycled glass. So that also helps on the ambient, right? That also helps the atmosphere. Not just that, our distillery is certified as a CO2 neutral distillery process, distillation process, so carbon neutral. What that means is that all the gases that the, that the distillery produces, we recollect them and then we redirect them and use it as fuel. So all those gases that are bad for the atmosphere or the planet or even for us, we don't throw them away. We don't let them go. On the contrary, we use them, we reuse them as fuel. So it certifies CO2, one of the most efficient distilleries in the world. That's gonna be why, that's why we market it and we don't market it, that's one of our uniqueness, right? Our brand uniqueness, we are unnecessarily good. Not just on flavors, but also because we how do you say that in English? We help the atmosphere in our process. So, and our third and our fourth and final pillar, it is made for mixing. Remember when I said, you know, that uh, the CEO in 1979 decided to create a new art campaign and then started that collaboration with one of the most known artists? That was because he, he always supported the creativity, diversity, and the creative mind or, and the creative process of each individual. So, hence, right? Absolute is made for mixing. And what better way to showcase that creativity by creating cocktails, creating recipes, creating flavors, creating experiences through flavors than at a bar, right? Absolute vodka by itself can withstand all, or basically anything that you throw at it. When I say anything, I say fruity flavors, I say spices, I say amaros, I say herbs, I say everything that you can throw into it, and then salini, right? You know, the other martini with olive brine. That's really salty. It will stand up to it, and it will mix well with it, and it will create a delicious experience. So that's why we say it is made for mixing. Very good for now? Yeah. Awesome. So, now, we went through the, what makes us unique, but also we gotta see a little bit, you know, refresh the process of, of how Absolute Vodka is made. Like we stated before, right? We get, we source the raw material from uh, Ahu, Switzerland. Ahu, Sweden. It's gonna be a hundred mile radius from the village, and our raw material is gonna be winter wheat. <coughs> Once we get the winter wheat, we will, we throw it through a milling process, or we just, grind it into a fine like powder, fine like flour, where 
then that flour is gonna be at, it's gonna be in, put into a machine, turn add hot water to it, let it steep for around 24 hours to create a sugary liquid. That sugary liquid is gonna get filtered. Once we filter it, we're gonna put it in the fermentation tanks, tanks, and then add the yeast. And what happens when you add yeast to sugar, right? To sweetener, beer, right? Okay, fermentation. The fermentation stands, and what's left is gonna be an eight to ten percent alcohol by volume beer-like substance, which we will fit, uh, which will, which we will filter, and then go into the raspberry distillation. The raspberry distillation is gonna be the first, uh, the first, basically the first part of the two-part distillation process. In the raspberry, in the raspberry, we will. Go put it on the on the bottom, you know, and then it will pass by through the second column as well. So it's really important to understand that because if this is called a column still, a column still use beer or how we how we make gin. So it's really important to understand the, the. So after that, we go into what is known as the rectification to take out all those uh, chemicals that are bad for the human consumption. Yeah. Right? Make a pure, a pure uh, end product. So after the rectification process, what we are left is gonna be what is called a neutral grain spirit. It's a spirit that's gonna be 96% alcohol by volume. And by being neutral, it doesn't, doesn't have gluten. So it's gluten free. That's another key important subject to have in your back pocket because right now there's a lot of trends, right? There's a lot of uh, drinking trends of guests that are, I, don't, I don't I don't eat gluten or I don't drink gluten, gluten, anything that has gluten. I'm allergic to gluten. So absolute vodka or absolute glue, like I like to call it, the original one, it's gluten free. Even though we don't market it. It's really important to have it. So there's some two, three different vodkas are all by uh, no that they say on the bottles, gluten free, right? But this one can be used as well. So if somebody asks you for that, boom, we got the, the best one. There you go, absolute blue. It's really important to have that in mind as well because, uh, let's put it this way, every destiny that's not infused or that's not savor, that doesn't have any type of flavor, is gonna be gluten free. Because in the process, and the cover bustles, we cook basically the, the beer so high that it kills all the bacteria inside. Oh, we good on that, that little piece of information? Awesome, making it happen, guys. And after, right after we get that 96% alcohol by volume substance, we go into what we, what we call the blending. And blending is nothing more than just adding water to it to bring it down from 96% ABV to 40% ABV. Once we bring it to 40% alcohol by volume, then we go into the bottle. And that's what, there you got it. And that's why, that's where absolute vodka comes to be. Comes to exist, right? Really simple, straightforward. It's gonna be made from winter wheat, which is sourced from 100 mile radius from the village of Sweden. It's gonna be a house, exactly. A house, a house, Sweden. Uh, it's gonna be gluten free, clear, Really silky, really smooth, and we're gonna get into it right, right away. Right. We're good for now. A big refresher on the process of distillation. It's supposed to actually be adapted or going to basically any spread right now in the world just to have you an idea. So, we're gonna go into what absolute vodka basically is in a nutshell. Absolute vodka, as we know, you know, one source, one community. We are really intertwined with the community. We have really opened our policy with our farmers. Even if they have any problems or they 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 come to any obstacle, we will help them to get over it, and we will help them in any way, shape, or form. So there's a big, big sense of commitment that we have with the village, with us. Everything comes from one source. Our water comes from the river that's gonna be right beside, right beside the distillery. And our, our winter wheat is gonna be completely <coughs> Swedish. So after that we go, like we said, unnecessarily good. Our bottles are gonna be 53% recycled glass. You know, at least, on minimum. Our, desti our <coughs> destination process is gonna be carbon neutral, CO2 certified. 
So we're not throwing anything anything else to the to, to the to the atmosphere of the planet. What, what is left from the flower-like substance, we process it and we feed it and we feed it to the to the cattle. We use it as feed, cattle feed, if you will. So we and it, it, and nothing goes to waste. We keep re reusing everything into the into a, a cycle, if you will. So if that's really important, unnecessarily good. And of course, it's made for mixing. And the reason why we say it's made for mixing, we're going to get into it right now. So we're going to taste a little bit, but taste it to understand absolute vodka. Not taste it just to know, like we used to be, like we used to do. You know, we, we, we give it a chat, we like it. Absolute uh, soda, absolute cranberry juice. We drink it because we like what, the, the consequences or the effects that it has on us, right? We all do, you know, that's, that's normal. But nonetheless, now we're going to get a little bit deeper into what it means and what and how it behaves. So for that, I know that there are the three young ones in the back. I'm going to give them a little bit so they are not excluded. As you can see, we have three different flavors. We have over here, it's going to be butterscotch. We have vanilla and we have caramel. And of course, we have a, a freshness feel to it. So that freshness will be more in the finish, if you will. We're gonna go through it, and we're gonna taste them. We can a guided taste, if you will. So. So, well, in order to do that, we're gonna go. So the tasting in front of you guys, you have to your left, is gonna be absolute. In the middle, it's going to be the Peter Jim, and to your right, which is a part the one that has colors, it's going to be James. But we're going to take the one in the left, in the left first. And like we said, right, we got to first look into the visual test. We got to see that it's clean, that it's clear, that there's nothing to it, nothing has been added to it, no coloring to it. You know, that's really important to understand. That it's pure, a pure source of absolute vodka. Second time. The second step. So for the second step, we're gonna follow, I'm gonna explain why we're gonna do it this way. Because if not, then we're gonna fatigue our senses. Yeah. As we know, the human body will perceive flavor around 80, 85% of the time through smell. But sometimes we have a little bit more of a, kind of a habit of just diving into the glass, right? Just putting our nose in deep inside of it, like this. By putting the nose over there, we're just, no, don't put it, don't put it, don't do it, don't do it. So by putting the nose like that, we're fatiguing the sense of smell. So we're just basically creating a timeout for it, and we won't be able to, to perceive any taste, any, any smells. So in order to, in order to, um, how do you say that? Evade that or not do it that way, right? We don't want that, we don't want, we don't want that timeout. We're gonna do it inch and a half from our nose, and we're gonna do it with our mouth open, like this. Why with our mouth open? Because everything that goes inside needs to have a flow to get out. And the ethanol content, once we have the mouth open, is gonna create a flow. It goes in through the nostrils and out through the mouth. That way, we're not fatigued in the sense of smell. So let's do it that way, right? Inch and a half from our nose, mouth open. What do we smell? What do we identify? Odorless. Odorless. Ethanol, right? Alcohol. Ethanol. Alcohol. Alcohol. Ethanol. When you do it with the mouth open, you didn't feel anything like bitterness on the back of the palate? On the tongue? Try to do it again. Yeah. Something kind of bitterness, something kind of uh, like yeah, 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 like bitter, 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 yeah. And that's this is where caramel comes into play. When we're talking about caramel, we're not talking about the flavor of caramel. We're talking about the effect that caramel has on our palate. Do you know what we have? A, 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 a caramel candy. We we eat it, and then sometimes it kind of dries up the back of our of our palate, of our tongue, right? So that effect is what we know as caramel. And hence, that's why we is one of our tasting notes in Absolute Vodka. So we have caramel that flavors to it. We have that a little bit of sweetness as well. On the tip of the lost nose, we identify something a little bit sweet. That sweetness is attributed to vanilla. When we smell vanilla or when we smell vanilla, we identify that kind of smooth sweetness to it. 
but then it yeah, just kind of fades out. That really subtle, so subtle aroma of vanilla. So that's where it goes into play. That's basically, you know, on, the, on those notes, right? It's really important to have that because that, as we know, you know, it's supposed to be odorless and tasteless, but we're finding in absolute vodka, in this premium vodka, we're finding different characteristics that make it unique. Now, let's go into the tasters. Let's give it a little kiss, just to, to acclimate the palate, right? Just a little bit. Okay, the taste. Sweet, sweet, spicy, has that caramel like flavor as well. Mm. Sweet, spicy in the end. And when we say, you know, in the end, in the finish, like, like we say, we taste in the finish, that spiciness kind of dissipates, kind of goes out. That's what we call freshness. That's, that's the terminology that we use in order to refer to it. Freshness. Freshness. I'll drink. I'll try it. Oh my god. Don't finish it. Disappears. No presentation. No. And as well, we can identify a little bit like caramel, like notes or essence in our mouth. And let's take another, a little bit more bigger inflation. That's it, right? It gets oh. the mouth, the tannins get, get covered up with the mouth. It kind of has that, uh, a little bit of weight to it. It has that, that, that weight, that viscosity, that texture, that oiliness, oil, oiliness, if you will. That is great for one of the, uh, the top three vodka cocktails in the world, right? Everybody knows this cocktail. And if we do it with a flavor run even better, if we do it with, let's say, absolute vanilla, Kalua, and coffee, we got our espresso martini. Thank you, Toby Chachini. Uh, actually, thank, thank you, Dick Russell, for creating that cocktail in the late 1980s. So, you know, what I'm known as a vodka espresso, then it will be to an espresso martini. But nonetheless, if you do it with absolute vodka, that oiliness and that texture complements the textures that coffee brings to a cup. And it creates more like a milkshake kind of feel to it, instead of just pure water or just pure coffee. So it's, it's much made in heaven. Absolute vanilla adds, adds that la layer of depth and flavor to it, and brings forth a lot more notes, not in, not in notes of the, of, the, of the coffee, and as well of the caramel. So that's a great way to mix it up. Absolute vodka is one of the best, best vodka, not the best vodka to serve on an espresso martini. The silkiness, it's smooth, it's delicious, and if you do it with absolute elix, you're taking it to a whole different level. And not just that, it's not just because, you know, absolute elix, you know, it's a premium, a premium, premium vodka. But also, it's a lot more money in your pocket because that means that you can do an upcharge when you're selling, right? And at the end of the day, it's more money in your pocket through tips and it's more money in the cash flow. So everybody wins. It's a win-win situation. You, can, you give a new experience to the guests and as well, every, making a lot more money. And at the end of the day, that's the name of the game. So, that's basically Absolute Vodka. Of course, we have our Absolute Mule, Absolute Martini cocktails. So, the Absolute Mule, we can definitely have a classic one, 45 ml to 50 ml, a splash of lime. I put 10 ml, just kind of measure it. But you can do less if you want to, or just one lime wedge, it's up to you. And then top it up with a ginger beer. Classic style, you know, build it, you don't have to shake or anything like that, super fast, super easy. And of course, our absolute martinis. This one is taken from the classic style of martini, not shaken. If you switch it, it's going to be a third cocktail, correct? So I would, this one would be absolute original, 60 ml or 55 ml, depending, right? Lille Blanc, which is going to be a fortified wine, will act as a vermouth, but Lille Blanc adds that little bit of a bitterness at the end, creating more depth and flavor. Uh, 10 to 15 ml, give or take. And then orange bitters, boom. Two touches of orange bitters. Glass martini, stir, serve on a cocktail glass, lemon or orange peel, your, your choice. But if you do it as well, this one, if you do it with absolute elix, it will bring a lot more layer. Absolute elix will have a little bit of nuttiness to it and cacao nuts that will complement really well the orange peelers and the lille blanc. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be a little bit higher in alcohol as well. So yeah, that's basically what we, 
Next thing that happens with vodka, our absolute arena. After that, we're going into our flavored vodka, flavored range. So for this one, as you can see, we have over here our citrus, our citrus range. It's gonna be citron, absolute lime, absolute mandarin, absolute grapefruit. And if you notice, underneath them, we have those citrus flavors that are gonna be 40% alcohol by volume. Normal, right? Absolute blue is going to be 40% alcohol as well, so that's the standard. But if you notice, our fruity, our, sw our sweet and spicy, fruity, fru fruity flavors are going to be 38% alcohol by volume. But they're going to be 2% alcohol by volume less. 2 ABV less. Because and there's a reason for it. Because our citrus flavors are a lot more stronger, so they can withstand a 40% ABV. Uh, we want the spiciness and we want the, the fruitiness of those flavors to withstand and be showcased and hold more, hold better, right? Against any other flavors. So that, that's why we drop, drop it down to ABVs. So they can be more present in the cocktails. Another, another great, for example, another great cocktail that you can definitely make it, you know, we already said the Moscow Mule, classic absolute vodka cocktail, right? Or absolute mule. But if you take that absolute mule and you make it <laughs> Absolute grapefruit, it's delicious. Or if you make it with absolute mango, even better. And let's go get a little bit more on the tropical side. Más tropical right? Like we used to say, you know, the classic cocktail from where I come from, or the national cocktail from Puerto Rico. Does anybody know which one is it? Como? La piña colada. Colada. Yeah. Pineapple. So we, we do a piña colada with vodka, it's called a chichi colada. Chichi colada. And if you do it instead of the absolute flavor, like mango, absolute mango or absolute vanilla, it's creating a great, great experience. Something that's outside the box but stays inside the box. That makes sense, right? It's a piña colada but adding a lot more flavor to it. And mango, coconut, and pineapple, they go hand in hand. You know, absolute grapefruit goes really well with citrusy flavors like ginger ale, ginger beer, most common with that one, or most common with absolute mandarin, delicious. So there's a lot of versatility, a lot of creativity that can be done with absolute book. That's why we are born to mix. That's how, that's, that's how we tied everything up if you come to think about it. As well, absolute berry, everybody, everybody knows what uh, best berry is, right? Yeah. Classic cocktail, chicken, nut stir, the 107 style. James Bond. So you can definitely use gin, right? And the vodka component, you can use absolute pears or absolute passion fruit or absolute raspberry to give it another depth of flavor. So it stays on the same line as that classic stuff, which is the beach. And not just that, our key uniqueness on our absolute flavors is gonna be that they are no sugar added. All of them are gonna be no sugar added. You know, some you will have guests that will ask, yeah, I want a skinny margarita. Don't you can have it? Of course, they're definitely a skinny margarita. But if you do a margarita with absolute, what is it? It's a kamikaze or a lemon drop? Depends on the, depends on the, on the juice that you use. If you use lemon, lemon drop. If you use lime, it's kamikaze. So it's sweet, by switching the tequila for one of our flavor ones of absolute, absolute flavors, it will add a lot more data, a lot more layers of flavors and will create a different experience. If you do it with a peach, with absolute peach, it's gonna be delicious. Triple set, absolute peach, lime, a little bit of agave, the same recipe that you guys have, just switch tequila for absolute flavors. That's it, simple. And it also, by using absolute flavors, you can definitely ramp up the sales. You can charge more. You can do a lot more PPA, man, about the PPA uh, per, uh, per price per head, right? Instead of 15, you can charge 20 bucks, four bucks more. As well, that's more money in the cash drawer, more money in your pocket, and everybody's happy. It's a great way, so the idea behind it, behind flavors, is basically that. It's connecting, being created behind it. And let's put out a little fun fact. Everybody knows the most famous vodka cocktail in the world. Everybody knows it. It's basically triple sack, lime juice, Cranberry juice and vodka. But the vodka, exactly, the cosmopolitan. But the vodka that was used originally for the recipe that we know as a cosmopolitan today, absolute citron. In 1988, that cocktail was created by a gentleman by the name of Toby Cecchini, a bartender from New York. He had the bottle, he needed to create a cocktail, and then that just came to mind and created the cosmopolitan. 
Simple recipe. Two, one, one, one. That's it. Two parts absolute vodka, one part triple sec, one part uh, lime juice, one part cranberry juice. That, uh, you know, that's the, that's the cosmopolitan as we know it today. We gotta take in consideration that since the 1927, there are cocktails that have been known as cosmopolitan. Even old fashioned style cocktails. But the, the cosmopolitan that everybody knows, the one that has been on the Sex and the City, the one that has been in, 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 in Europe, it's gonna be two parts of absolute citron. One part triple sec, one part cranberry, one part lime juice. That's it. Chicken, serve. Delicious cocktail. And of course, no sugar added. You know, that's gonna be basically our range. We're gonna be made exclusively from natural ingredients. One source, one community. Where we make uh, absolute blue, that's where we make absolute uh, work flavors. And we are sustainable. We are one of the most efficient distilleries in the world. I know I said it multiple times, but I'm gonna keep saying it because that's one of our key pillars as well. We are proud that we are one of the most efficient and one of the most sustainable and responsible distilleries right now in operation. And of course, Absolute was made born to mix. Supporting diversity, supporting creativity. That's why our ritual, our perfect circle are gonna be cocktails. Most of mules, where lemon drops, kamikazes, chichicoladas, you name it. Add vodka, mixes well with everything. We're good with uh, Absolute? Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. So, let's get into gin. So, Big Theater, yes. gin, was created by the by a fellow by the name of James Burrow. Uh, he was he's, he was born in London from the 1830s, 1820s. Uh, he studied as a pharmacist and then specialized in being a chemist. Then he moved, uh, when he was of age, he had a degree, he moved to Toronto, to Toronto, Canada. When he moved to Toronto, Canada, he started working at a pharmacy as a chemist. Two, three years later, he didn't like it, he, went, he came back to London, and then he decided to buy a Chelsea-based distillery, which at that time was in operation. They were doing different liqueurs, they were doing different jeans, you know, they, they were they were pretty pink, pink, pink. And then when, when James Burrow bought that distillery, he decided to rename it as, a, as the James Burrow Distillery in Chelsea. Then they moved to different spots. And in 18, 19, actually 1820, give or take, uh, actually no, uh, in 1860s, that's where he bought it. He decided to different, he decided to experiment with different recipes of jeans. He created the James Burrow gene, he created a blackberry gene, he created a blackberry gene. But nonetheless, in the, in the 1870s, he decided to create a specific gene. And we all know that one as Bifeter. But what makes Bifeter different is that at that time, there were only two techniques being used in order to make gene. One was basically a compound gene or uh, infusing neutral grain spirits with botanicals filtering and then using it. And the other one was through vapor infusion. So vapor infusion is basically when you put up a basket of botanicals inside the still, and then you start the distillation process. The vapor will come will come up, will basically infuse with the botanicals, and then comes out with a lot more sort of flavor. He, as a chemist, decided to create a different recipe, and then he developed what is known the steep method, which is basically Taking neutral grain spirit, putting it in the in a copper pastel on the, on the bottom, which we'll see a little bit more. Adding the different botanicals, letting it steep for 24 hours, and then after that day, after the 24 hour, bring it in the distillation up. Really simple. We get the neutral grain spirit. We get the botanicals. The botanicals with the neutral grain spirits are gonna be basically infusing, if you will. Then they're gonna be put in the copper pastel on the bottom. Uh, actually, they're gonna be steeping in the bottom, in the still, and later they're gonna, they're gonna start the distillation process. We need the botanicals inside of the still. And that will yield a uh, bifitter gene, basically. Which is gonna be a little bit more higher volume, and then we add, again, the same process as absolute vodka, we are going into blending, and when we say blending, we're adding water to cut it down to proof. So when it says a minimum of 35% alcohol by volume, it's because in some cases, just like tequila, uh, sometimes 
the gene that we use is, can be 38, 37, 39, and it's acceptable by those country standards. Since we uh, we basically get the bottles from the spread from the U.S., the U.S. by law states that it can only be a minimum of 40 percent to get into the states. So that's a whole different conversation. That's a whole different volume. But it's, the important thing is that the alcohol by volume that you guys have right now in the Vipiro products are gonna be 40 percent alcohol by volume, and that's basically the production. So this is gonna be the process of steeping. This is gonna be a uh, still, one of the stills over there. And what you see over here is going to be all the botanicals that we use. Should we do a little bit clear of that? Yeah. 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 Cool. So this is going to be the steel that we use, the steel number 14. When I went to the CRD, it's really small, small spot. But they produce so much gene that it's insane. I would say that the CRD is going to be around the same amount, the size of this hotel, give or take. A little bit, a little bit less. And it's delicious. You can smell all the botanicals. Once you get to the visitor center, it gets to you. And basically, yeah, this is going to be one of our, so Peter Jean, just a little fun fact. There's only three people that have the recipe in the world. Only three people. And they have it partial. They don't have, they don't have it full. Each one has a way of doing uh, a responsibility that they have to fulfill in order to make change. The first one, the first shift comes in the morning. He does what does his uh, responsibilities. The second shift comes in the morning, does his responsibility, and then Desmond Payne, which is the master distiller of Peter, he's been with that company for over 40 years. Uh, he oversees that production. He's the only one that has the full, full recipe. And it's fun, it's really interesting. He's a super cool guy, super cool guy. So, we're talking about the botanicals, right? Everybody's now, what? We're talking about botanicals, right? Which are they? Simple. Of course, we need juniper berries in order to make gin, right? We're gonna see that beef feeder is gonna be a little bit more on the citrusy, citrusy side, and hence we're gonna have lemon peels and orange peels. Also, coriander, believe it or not, coriander seeds will add, will help to highlight the flavors of uh, citrus coming from the lemon and the orange peels. Orange fruit, angelica root, licorice fruit, and almonds will highlight a bitterness on the back end. Kind of like an earthy notes to it. Angelica seeds will have that freshness. Will have that minty, that, uh, flavor, that minty flavor in the back end. So it's great for gin and tonics. It's great for citrusy cocktails. We're going to talk about some, about some, of, some of them more uh, in the next slide. So take a picture of these ones. This is going to be really important to have. The nine different botanicals that we use for Bifida. And if you're doing a cocktail at your house, you can definitely use quinquina, you can uh, quinquina or gin and tonic, or to, uh, quinquina tonic. That will highlight those certain notes too. Coriander. Good. 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 Yeah. Sure. So, what is Pipeter? Do you guys have Pipeter over there or do you guys need it? We don't have it. Okay, cool, perfect. Let's make it happen. So, our Pipeter, London Dry Gin, of course, as you know. It's made in London. It's gonna be made. The, our bottles are gonna be a hundred percent recycled. Hundred percent recycled glass and plastic. You can take a photo over there. It's a specific, unique group or set of people that live at St. James. They don't, the St. James Palace, they live in a, in a small area designated for them. They don't go out, they live over there. And it's a select few who can have that uniform. And it's just a select few. Desmond Payne, which is going to be our master investigator for the theater, is one of three honor, honorary members of the Guillaume Guard. So he has literally a uniform, an official uniform, sanctioned by the queen at that time. Now it's the king, right? The highest 
uh, highest authority up in, in London, uh, he has that uniform right, by, right beside his office. And he puts it for official events of the, of the Queen and official events of the theater. He's only one of three people to have an official Befeater uniform and be recognized by the Befeater order, if you will. Like, so it's really, it's, really fun. it's really fun. And like we said, Befeater is going to be one of the most awarded games in the world with over, over 15, 20 different awards all throughout its history. We're, we will get to see why. Nine botanicals. He pioneered the technique of steeping botanicals and then distilling, then distillation. So, nine botanicals, steam for 24 hours, and our bottle is going to be made from 100% recycled glass and recycled plastics and metal. So it's 100% recy recycled ingredients. So that way we're also keeping that commitment to responsibility as a brand and as a company. Perfect? Good. Yeah, boom, let's make it happen, let's get it. So we're going to make it happen, right? Right in the middle, the one on the top. Yeah. Right, let's see, of course, the first step, visual aspect of things. Let's see how it goes. Clear. It's clear. Yeah. It cannot, it cannot, it's a little bit slower when it comes down on the walls, right? Than the vodka. A little bit slower. So that means that it's going to have a little bit more uh, texture and it's going to have a little bit more sugar content to it. Really important to have that, right? So let's do the nose. Let's do a, each and a half with the mouth open. Yeah, mouth open. What do you see? What do you feel? Orange, lemon, yeah, smell lemon. Spicy, right? Really spicy. And then, 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 yeah. Ah, okay. The roots will add that earthiness. Now let's yeah, give it a little bit. Yes, that's right. Yeah. Sweet on the sweet on the bottom, right? Sweet, 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 the beginning, sweet, 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 uh, but it also has that kind of bitterness to it. Yeah. That bitterness is the combination of all the roots into it. And then creates that purple, that terrain, that earthiness. That's what, exactly, that, that's what makes one of the that I was going to say. So that earthiness finish, it's great for tonics. And that's great for our key signatures, gin and tonics. It's citrusy, it's really, really refreshing, it has that bitterness in the end. And it's not overpowering with any of the other, other flavors. Right? Also, if we're going to go a little bit more classic Marino cloud, Vinto. we have the Bee's Knees Classic Cocktail. Classic. Oh, classic Cocktail, Honey Lemon and Gin. Simple. 60, 25, 20. Then, if we're going to go a little bit more, we can definitely do the Pego Club. Which the Pego Club is basically a margarita made with gin. Simple recipe, the same recipe. But let's say instead of a, instead of a margarita, do substitute the tequila for gin, and then we have a pego club. Exactly the same thing, the same measurement. You can serve it up or you can serve it on a rug, just like a margarita as well. And we'll bring forth a different layer of flavor and a different experience for the guests. And if we want to get a little bit more tropicalero, you know, Island Oasis has a mix that's going to be their berry blend. It's gonna have blackberries, it's gonna have a uh, raspberry, and I think blueberries as well. So, does anybody know what a bramble is? A cocktail, bramble cocktail is, right? So it's gonna be a gin sour with a flow of creme de mure, which is gonna be a blackberry liqueur. But if you take gin, add to it uh, the black, the blackberry or the berry island masses mix, and blend it, basically you have a brown, a frozen bramble. And then you can bring forth a different experience with gin cocktails. The same, for example, a mango, the mango island oasis. You add a little bit of amaretto to it. Gin, amaretto, mango, island oasis, blended, it's going to be delicious as well. 
different ways of doing it. And as well, you can you can charge a lot more what, a lot more for those those cocktails as well. It's really versatile. As you can see, it's really citrusy. It has that earthy finish on the back, so it's, it works well with nutty with nutty flavors like uh, like a hazelnut liqueur or amaretto liqueur. Goes really well with them as well. But it also goes really well with uh, triple C, goes really well with limoncello, you name it. So it's really, really versatile and delicious and really subtle flavors. Okay? Also, take a photo, please. By all means, if you want that, what, if you want our recipes as well, please take a photo with it. Although we have over here the nine botanicals, this information is for you, for me to share, guys, for you to have. Boom! Let's take a little bit of water first, right? We gotta drink responsibly. Yeah. 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 We gotta clean our palate. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Take the water to clean the palate. Yeah? <laughs> so, Jason, as some of you guys, you will have a, a bottle of Yemo in front of you. And the reason for that being is that the story of Jameson can be found in the whole bottle. So, on the neck, we can see John Jameson, which is the name of the founder, right? Yeah. Uh, underneath there we see JJ and Sons, John Jameson and Sons, which is the company that founded Jameson Irish Whiskey. We also have the date established in 1780, which is the date that the distillery was uh, founded. We also have the, this Jim, name, which is going to be a last John name. Jameson and Sons. John Jameson and Son. And this is where it gets interesting. John Jameson was not Irish. Who? John Jameson was a Scottish fellow. Mm. He's from Scotland, or he was from Scotland. Mm. So, his family in Scotland were pirate fighters. What, what that means is that they would go all around the coast of uh, Scotland fighting off pirates. And they were really good at it. To the point, to the point that the government of Scotland got a hold of that and then gave them the family press. As you can see right in the middle, there's gonna be uh, ooh, ooh, ooh. 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 this water, this water is cold. Too much drinking. So, <laughs> mabuk, mabuk, mabuk. so that public press was given to the Jameson family by the government of Scotland. And the reason for that being, as we know, right, they were pirate fighters, and they gave them that they gave them the prep, the family press because of all the fights and battles that they won. They never lost. Them. And when they gave that to them, they designed a ship on the press. Hence, that's the reason why the ship is gonna be on the boat because of the family that were pirate fighters. And as well, within the family press, there's gonna be a small banner. That says Sinemitu. Sinemitu comes from the Gaelic language, meaning without fear, which is the philosophy and the motto that the Jameson family lived day by day. They went against all odds, they went without fear, they wanted to get into fights with the pirates, and they got it, and they won. This is really important, it's a great fun fact as well to give it to guests. People don't know that part of the history of the Jameson Irish whiskey. But it's really important because that way you can bring them and entice them and just enamor them and bring them to the fold of Irish whiskey. And yeah, it's gonna be triple the steel also. Because that's the way that John Jameson wanted it to be. It is not because we need to, it is because we want to. The government says that for Irish whiskey, you can distill twice. Not much. Right? Now our brand uniqueness. We're gonna go. So, in the, as we said, you know, it was established in 1780, all the way to 1960. In 1960, the, the company decided to move the distillery from Dublin, Ireland to Middleton Cork. When that happened, they designed or uh, they created the three tallest spot stills in, 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 today, in, uh, in operation today. The three tallest spot stills, I can hold up to 80,000 liters each one. That's a lot of booze. Our, our single pot still is gonna be made from malted and unmalted barley. Our brain whiskey is gonna be made from corn and malted barley. 
So I reach St. Jameson Irish whiskey is gonna be a blended Irish whiskey. So it's gonna have grain whiskey and single pots. And our grain whiskey is gonna be aged in first fill American oak for a minimum of three years. Good? So, so this is gonna be a photo of the, of, of the three largest fossils in the world. This over here is gonna be the Duvernay River where we get the water when we're doing the distillation to use to cut down the proof and the soup, you know, to, to make it happen. Uh, our tip of distillation on single fossils will go three times. One, we'll go one, two, three. It'll pass three times through the copper fossils. That's why it's super distilled. Single fossil. Once it hits the third, desti the third distillation, it will go into an ex cherry pot and, and age for at least a minimum of three years. Oh, now, the as we see over here, it's going to be multi party and a multi party. Right now, we source that, that party from a 100 mile radius from the city of Middleton, which is where our distillery is going to be located right now. Our water, like we said before, is going to be taken from the Duvernay River, which flows right through the Jameson Distillery. And our corn for our grain whiskey is going to be sourced from the south of France. And all our ingredients are going to be non-GMO, non-genetically -genetic modified. They're going to be as organic and natural as they can be. Corn and maize. It's really important to have that in mind as well. And our this our our grain whiskey is going to be triple distilled in corn stills. That's another fun fact. You will have guests that will ask you, why is it triple distilled if the grain whiskey only goes on one still? No, on one column still. When we put it on the column still, it goes on the first column, passes, then goes into a second column, passes through a second, and then goes into a third, third column. column. So it goes three times in three, it goes one time in three different column stills. In essence, being triple distilled as well. So all our whiskey is going to be triple distilled. Really important to have that because you're going to have guests that will, turn, will kind of put you on the spot with those questions. So about it? Kuchkeva, right? It's uh, the word meaning water of life from the native language. It's the precursor for Water of life. Usi, usi better. That's how it pronounce it. Don't, don't, don't ask me how, how we came to with that. Because I don't see Kuchkeva over there in anything. It's really, really, really different from how it sounds. One shreta, meaning water of life. So, this is going to be our first fill American home. Also, it's really important, right? First fill American home. Does anybody know what first fill means? First fill? Oh? So, simple. First so, first fill means the first time that the distillery uses it. Oh. The first time that we in Jameson use it. Before that, it's going to be virgin oak. So um, bourbon whiskey uses virgin oak, which is a bottle that has never had any type of uh, whiskey or product inside of it. Right? But as we know, bourbon, by law, you can use it one time. So they discard it, and that's where Scotch whiskey and Irish whiskey come into play. We get those bottles, we purify them, and then the person that we use them, that's going to be called first fill. It's really important to have that in mind as well. Boom. Say cool. It's going to be a slogan. Triple the seal twice as smooth. Because like we said before, because not because we need to, we triple the seal because we can. Now let's get into it. You know, a little bit about, you know, twice as smooth, triple destinations, the magical, the magical technique. We're going to get our balance blend, single pot still. It's going to have that spicy apple to it, kind of fresh green apple flavor, uh, aromas. And we'll give it that texture as well. Our grain whiskey is going to have that creaminess and that smoothness, kind of create uh, a glue to it. And of course, gonna, our, uh, of course, right, Irish whiskey is synonymous with Jameson. The reason for that being is that over 60% of the sales of Irish whiskey in the world are made by Jameson. So we sell over 60% of the whole Irish whiskey market. So we are a juggernaut, we are an icon within that category. That's all right, yeah, right guys? Now let's fight. 
Everybody has, everybody has tried it once, at least once in their life. We all know that. But let's see, right? Let's see. Let's okay. see the visual aspect of things. Let's see a little bit more in depth. Mmm. whiskey. Ah, you got some. Mmm. Orange, 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 We'll give it that bitterness, kind of like a coconut bitterness, if you will, that can go. So, we, we have coconut right now, right? And we're going tropicaleo. Yeah. We already had a chocolate, we already had a gin colada. Why not a gangsome colada? Can be. It's delicious. I had it multiple times with Alanas and a blend. And the thing with the whiskey in the piña colada, the whiskey will Game cut out the sweetness, and it will be a lot, that cloriness will go. And then you can drink three to four instead of one or two. So it's a great, great way as well to make those options and keep it going as well. That gin simple, hands down, it's, it's really, really, really good. Gay yeah, that's right, right? Yes. Eighteen years old. Eighteen years old. As you say, the James Sunny is off the hook. Now, also, now it's good that you say that, right? So, Jameson standard, the green bottle that we have in front of us, is going to be a blend of four to six year old aged whiskey. Four to six. The Jameson black bottle is going to be from six to nine. Future, you guys are going to have guests that are going to ask you. Two things. First of all, remember when I said that in the 1960s they moved the distillery from Dublin, Ireland to Middleton Court? When they did the move, that happened because at that time the Irish whiskey market took up dive. It wasn't selling well. So they decided to create kind of a marketing campaign or marketing tool. And that's when they came up with the Green Bottle. Also, before the 1960s or before the introduction of the Jason Green Bottle, Jameson could only be bought in what is called bootleg whiskey. Bootleg what that means is just gonna be sold in barrels. It wasn't sold by the bottle. But with the move came different changes. They decided to create the, the, the green bottle. The reason, the practical reason, right, is that if you put, you know, the back bar is gonna be full of black bottle, black bottles or, or brown bottles. And if you put a green bottle, the first thing that once you're scanning, the person that catches your attention is gonna be that green bottle over there. And then your mindset and, and attention will gravitate toward that bottle. And if you don't know it, you wanna try it. And if you know it, you, you will order it. So that was kind of a little bit, you know, marketing campaign behind it. And also, the main doors in the original distillery were made green. So they wanna keep it in the family, if you will. Green. So that's the reason why the bottle is green, and it's really important as well to have that in your pocketbooks, because you will have guests that will ask you, why is it green? Why is it not a, another color behind it? Because it has two different functions. And if they ask if it's green, we already did the practical one, because they got caught the attention of, of a bottle being green different, of a bottle being different from the rest. And now it's up to you, boom, to make the set as well. So it's basically that, that, that idea behind it. You can do it like we said, in, in Jameson coladas, piña coladas with Jameson, instead of rum, you can do it in mojitos as well. Mojito, uh, Jameson mojitos, delicious. You know, similar to a Jameson ginger and lime. If you come to think of it, Jameson ginger and lime has four ingredients. The same thing as mojito. The only thing is that you're substituting the ginger for mint. And the business is soda water. Good, 45 ml of Jameson, 20 ml of lime juice, 15 to 20 ml of sugar, zero, one to one. A pinch of mint inside of it, shake it, double strain, top it up with soda. There you go. Super simple, straightforward, and it's delicious. But as well, the ginger and lime, hands down, that's the, the, what's, what's there to say about it, you know? It's James delicious. James and Clara. Hi, James and Clara. So, we're good? Yeah. Yeah. So, before we go, before we go, let's do something. Also, a few, uh, so this is going to be like Cheers. 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 Please feel free to ask anything, maybe the history of our brands, anything you have, or any recipe that you want to try at your house, or anything at all. 
please DM me, direct message me, and I got you. And also, let's say your choice may be gin, vodka, or Jamo. Let's take it, right? And we're gonna do it this way. Arriba. Arriba. Oh, sí. Okay, that's a mix of luggage method today. Thank you. What am I saying? What am I saying? Thank you, thank you, thank you, guys. Yeah, you guys want to hold up, please? Let's go inside. 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 Let's go inside